Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be walking you through the best in-game Fortnite settings for keyboard and mouse. I made a guide just like this about 6 months ago, which for some reason doesn't seem too far in the past, but it's definitely time to update it. What I'm going to do is go in-depth over all these settings past the first page. That includes your keybinds, your sensitivity options, edit on release, everything outside your graphic settings because that's what's on the first page. If you're interested in only the graphic stuff, I've made a video on that, you can go check it out my season 7 settings guide. For everything else though, this is the video for you. One last thing, I think I'm also going to put a hand cam, that way you won't have any questions on why I prefer certain settings over others. So make sure to drop a like if this helps you out, and without further ado, let's get right on into it. Alright, so there should be timestamps down below for all of these different pages, for all the different major kind of sections within them. Like you see how this one has a bunch of settings on the side. And speaking of the side, I'm on the other side of your screen. Hello? I had to move out of the way of the actual settings. You guys should be able to see the hand cam. I think my hands look really white in it because the way the lighting is. I swear I'm not that white in person. Eh, kind of. But I'm rocking the Apex Pro TKL, the Endgame Gear. XM1 and the glorious XL, not the XXL, just the XL mouse pad. My setup is all black. It's not that exciting, not too aesthetically pleasing, and it probably will change because I change it like every week. But yeah, let's get into the actual settings, shall we? Starting off not on the first page, on the second, this is in the other settings guide video. We're going to go to the game settings, as you can see. Language and region. I'm NA East. I speak English. Let's get to the actual interesting stuff, which is your movement settings. So toggle sprint, I always tell people to have off. What toggle sprint does, I'll show it really quickly. With one press, you can see I'm not running because I have toggle sprint on. I am bot walking. But with one press of my sprint button, boom, I'm going to start sprinting. And then if I press it again, I'm going to bot walk. I suggest turning toggle sprint off because everyone, and I mean everyone, should be using sprint by default. Sprint by default is is literally what it sounds like. You just press W and you sprint. You can no longer bot walk. That is what sprint by default means. But Jarian, I want to be able to bot walk. Well, little Timmy, if you go to your keybinds and you bind something on sprint, some random keybind, while you're sprinting with sprint by default on and you press your sprint keybind, you're going to bot walk. Isn't that interesting? I bet a lot of you guys did not know that. Oh, and before I forget, another main reason to have sprint by default on is because you could take sprint off of left shift you get a free keybind left shift is one of the best keybinds you can have i suggest putting it on cone and i'll talk about that later but it just frees up one of the best and easiest keybinds to hit i use left shift for crouch yeah Sprint cancels reloading. This is another one that I suggest turning off. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll turn it on to show you guys how it works. So I'm going to shoot. And then when I go to reload, but start sprinting, it cancels it for me. That's not what you want. <laughs> reload. Nope. Sprint. Turn it off. That way, if you're shooting, you can reload. And look, it does not cancel the reload. You're not going to keep sprinting, but you will actually get the reload off. Auto open doors. This one, turn on. Auto open doors is amazing. What it does is anytime you're near a door, it's going to open it for you. The way I would usually open doors is you can see right there. Scroll wheel up on my mouse like I just did. But what I can also do, I'm not going to touch my mouse. You could see my hand. I'm just going to walk through it and it opens it for me. I can't close it. The only way to close it is with my interact key, but I can open it just by running straight at it. And before you say, but don't you kind of lose control? What if you just randomly open doors? First off, you have to get really close and you have to walk forward. So I can be right on top of it, but this is my other hand. If I'm not moving forward, it's not going to open it. I have to move forward in in that direction and then it opens it then secondly this is really good for when you kind of mess up an edit if i was trying to make like a little four corner edit but i just suck and i do this edit instead i would just run through it boom miss the edit boom miss the edit you barely lose any momentum and i'm telling you guys it's so useful in fights anyone who has it on will know what i'm talking about now for the combat settings we have hold to swap pickup that is the first one that again turn it on it's kind of underrated on keyboard and mouse most controller players i do believe use it because it's kind of essential let me drop my shotgun so so 
normally I would pick it up with my interact key. That's what the little sign there says. Press my interact key to pick it up. But you see how I have the blue pump in my inventory? If I wanted to swap this out, what most people would do is they would just pick it up, then go into their inventory, swap it and drop it. It only takes three seconds, but if you're in the middle of a fight or you want to do it really quickly, that is pretty darn slow, especially compared to this. Oh, you like that, right? That was pretty spicy. Hey, I just did it again and again and again, and I never had to go into my inventory. <laughs> I need some friends. How it usually works is you just have to hold down your actual interact key. So if mine was on like E, I would just hold down E. But as you guys could tell, I do not use a keybind on my keyboard. I use scroll wheel up on my mouse. And you can't hold that down. Pressing it in is a completely different bind in Fortnite. So what I have to do and what I suggest you guys who follow me with the superior interact key, mouse wheel up, is go into your settings and double bind your interact key. It is called use. It's under the combat keybinds. And like I said, you're going to double bind, which means the first one's going to be mouse wheel up or down. And then the second one is going to be just any key you have left over. I use C. That's going to go in the second column. That way, when I press my normal interact key, I'm going to pick up what's ever in front of me. I'm not going to swap it out. However, when I do want to swap it out, like in this case, I want to swap my blue pump that's in my inventory in the third slot for the gold pump shotgun. I don't want to have to go into my inventory and pick this up and drop it, do all that crap. All I'm going to do is hold the second interact keybind, which is C. Just held it down and boom. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It is amazing. You guys are welcome. And for that reason, turn hold to swap pickup on. After that is toggle targeting. I suggest off. Do not have this on. Toggle targeting is not as self-explanatory as the other ones. It's basically when you go to aim in or aim down sight, instead of you holding right click, you see my mouse? I don't even have my hand on it because I'm not holding down. It's on a toggle. So to toggle toggle it off and to aim out, you're going to press it again. It kind of seems useful, right? Because you just press and then unpress. You don't have to hold right click. The thing is, if you're trying to make a play on someone and you're going to aim in and out really quickly, which is what a ton of the top pros like Mongrel and Clicks do, they hold and then they let go. They make an edit, boom, peace control, aim in. You can't really aim in and then aim out that fast when you have toggle targeting on. This is off by the way, and you can tell because when I press, <laughs> I don't aim all the way in. It waits for me to hold right click down. I'm holding it all the way. And that is how I aim in and I let go is out. Mark danger when targeting is not the most important. I feel like not too many people actually care about it, but I think you should turn it on. How it works is a normal ping, not your in-game ping. I'm talking about this type of ping that you do with your cursor. To get the danger one when you have it on, all you have to do is aim in and then do the normal normal cursor kind of ping and boom you're gonna get the red danger one i feel like most people like if you're playing trios you're just gonna say oh they're on my marker so you don't have to say <laughs> my red marker but i don't know there's no issue with having it on auto pickup weapons i have off and i used to have this on i felt like it kind of used to be useful but nowadays not really so much when i turn it on i'm basically gonna run over something and like that it picked it up for me just picks it up but you guys can kind of see the problem right if you're just running through loot it's gonna pick up everything including stuff you don't really want <laughs> The only reason before I said to turn it on was because off spawn, you could just land on a gun like this and you would pick it up really quick. But I feel like with scroll wheel, it's kind of faster to land next to something and then pick it up with your interact key. So for that reason, I say turn that shiz off and not on. Final setting in the combat section is auto sort consumables to the right. Definitely turn this on. This is one I love. How this one works is any sort of consumable, which is basically a heal. Are there no heals? As I was saying, when you pick up any sort of consumable, which is a heal, it's going to sort it all the way to the right of your inventory. You can even see right now, there's like a white box that shows where it's going to go when I pick it up. This does not happen with weapons. So you see with weapons, I'm right next to a pistol. It's going to go to the right of the most recent item I just picked up. But for minis or any sort of consumable, when I pick it up, 
it goes right to the end so you're never gonna accidentally pick up minis in your first slot and then try to like beam someone when you realize oh no i have minis that is not where i wanted them to be there is no real reason to have it off for keyboard and mouse on to the building settings these ones are very very easy reset building choice i don't actually think does anything on keyboard and mouse the only people this is useful for is for controller players because they use what's called the switch quick bar and what that does i'll put it to a random keybind is it brings up the last build nobody on keyboard and mouse uses this you're always gonna press your wall your ramp your cone or floor keybind you should not be using switch quick bar like controller players do for that reason it does not matter what you have it on i just have it on on because it kind of looks Looks cool all of these are on <laughs> i don't know disable pre-edit option i highly suggest having this on you guys should know what pre-edits are it's basically that you can edit before you actually place the build look i have these mini walls this can be useful i've seen teams like pro teams in scrims they'll pre-edit a wall like this and then they'll spray an opponent build this wall and the opponent will be like what the heck they'll try to replace it but they can't because it's the other teams and then they just get sprayed to death if you want to use it for that then sure turn it on and leave it on but i just find it really annoying where something just does not place or you make the mistake of editing too early and you're in the middle of a fight with all these random builds it's just too triggering i turned disable pre-edits on so when i was saying on before i meant pre-edits on this would be pre-edits off but disable pre-edits on what that does is no matter what you cannot pre-edit so i'm spamming my edit key there's literally no option for it on the actual build piece i remember it used to work how you could still pre-edit but then if you pulled out another build it would reset but the way it works now is you just cannot pre-edit at all it is way way better whatever you guys use if you do not pre-edit a lot you could leave it off but i do i have disable pre-edits on turbo building of course please turn this on that's the greatest setting ever that allows me to just hold the left click and I don't have to spam left click to place all these. If you do not use turbo build in chapter two, season seven, like why are you even watching this? I ought to smack you in the mouth. Now for the big one, confirm edit on release. Oh my, oh my. A lot of people have been switching off of it as in pros. I of course use it because I'm an old man. If you need an explanation for what it does, basically instead of having to press my edit key, select and then press it again. All I have to do with edit on release on is select the keys and I don't have to press E again. I just have to let go of left click. This is technically one less action and it's been proven to be way quicker. There's no delay with it. All the fast editors, all the creative gods like Cultures and Rift, they all use confirm edit it on release the argument kind of comes down to if you want more control which is confirm edit on release off versus faster editing and more optimal movement because your movement actually does get better like in my case i edit with e which means my index finger has to come off my d and i cannot run right when i go to press edit i'm pressing edit i can't run right i can go left but i can't go right unless i have confirm edit on release on which i do this is a big reason i think that players like stretch and Booga have it on. They have really bad keybinds, so they need to improve their movement. And confirm edit on release does. It lets their index finger have a little break and return to the D key quicker because as I just said, they just have to press E once. They can go back to D and to let go of the edit, they just let go of left click on their mouse. You don't have to press D twice. You get way better movement, baby. But Jerrion, why does Noah Riley have it off? There is a legitimate reason to have it off. This is one of the settings that could go either way and you can be good with it on or off look how slow i am with it off <laughs> oh my god but the reason is because when you have confirm edit on release off, you have a lot more control just because you could put your crosshair here. You don't have to leave it over these tiles, which you do for confirm edit on release because that's how left click works. When you hold down left click, it's going to select whatever you're hovering over. So I cannot move it off these three tiles with confirm edit on release on because if I do, 
it's gonna select them. Oh, that's the one bad part about it, but I am way too old to be clicking that many times. But to each their own, Taysen uses it off, Boga uses it on, Stretch uses it on, Noah Riley uses it off. Just do whatever the heck you guys want. For the final game settings, none of these really matter except for tap to search. That's the final one we care about, which I say have on. You actually need it if you use mouse wheel up or down because it just won't work if you have it off. So all I'm doing is scrolling up and it's going to pick up because I have tap to search on. And even if you don't use it that way, like I'm going to use it for C. I'm pressing C right now. All I had to do is tap. I did not have to hold it down, any of that. And that makes it way easier to get kind of field of view on other people because you just tap you could look to the right to open chests to do any of that stuff this is another no-brainer put tap to search on Next up is technically the game UI, the HUD options. I don't know if you guys care about this. I think the bigger it is, the better. Like, I use 100. Maybe 110 is the max that I would go to personally, but I would not be using something like 60%. That's just way too small. You can't even see your builds or the mini-map. And I know you guys are gonna say, Your HUD is so big, dude. I wanna get nice-looking clips. I just feel like it's stupid to have all that stuff that small. You're gonna die every end game because you don't even realize you have no mats. As far as these go, I have pretty much all of them on, including the reticle ammo indicator. That is the one where you can see when I take out my gun, it shows the ammo. Most pros use this. I'm not sure if they pay attention to it. That might be a good question for an actual pro. Like, do they actually look at it? Because I don't really pay attention to it. I have it on, <laughs> but I don't really look at it a lot. Let me know if any pros pay attention to it. The only other one that's kind of interesting, I guess, is the latency debug stats. This is the one where in the top left, you can see all the latency stats, which is how much milliseconds of input delay you get. It's kind of interesting, but I would not recommend having it on in game. And yeah, everything else is basically on. And put it on 100%. The bigger is better. Hey yo! Following that up, we have the mouse and keyboard sensitivity options. I use 800 DPI and 7%. I actually used to use 400, but I saw a lot of pros switching because of what's called pixel skipping. So I don't think it has too big of an effect. Like it's not really that noticeable, but it does exist. And it's basically a phenomenon where the lower your mouse DPI is, which you can't change in the in-game Fortnite settings. You can change it through your mouse software, even just through a button on your mouse. The lower that is, the more pixels that it's going to skip, and it's just not going to be as smooth. Someone in the Fortnite scene should do a test, because I know it does exist, and you can kind of tell through the actual inventory, which is the only part of the game that only uses your DPI. The rest uses your DPI times your in-game sense. Still, there's a lot of pros that use 400 DPI, some that use 1600, 3200. Sensitivity is all preference. 800 times 0.0 seven is 56 which is my edpi i think the best range is between like 48 edpi and around 64 that's like the sweet spot and what i see the most pros play on all in all though trial and error is the best way to find a good sense you want to be able to hit your shots while also being able to build and edit fast that's the hardest part about keyboard and mouse because everyone could play on a low sense and just hit straight 200s but it's hard to be able to have that same sense sense and then be able to crank make giant fast edits just be an absolute mechanical demon Anyways, targeting sense, scope sensitivity. Targeting is this one right here. I have mine on 30. Again, use trial and error. I've seen pros that have it on 100%, which means their targeting sense is the same as their normal hip fire sense. You can see I do not slow down at all. I don't recommend that. I think anything lower than 50% is good. I mean, it makes sense. Like, you use this so you could hit people far away. I don't know. Scope sensitivity, it's the same thing except with snipers and bows. Bows aren't even in the game anymore, man. Ignore gamepad input, I suggest turning off. It even says if you're using an input remapping tool, which most people are with double movement, the one that does is this one, lock input method as mouse. What this does is with double input, you can see in the bottom right, it's like freaking out. It's going to controller, then back to keyboard and mouse. Everything's bugged and glitched because I use double movement. I suggest you guys should too. And you have to turn this on to 
make it work. If you do not use double movement, I use the Wooting software. Go and watch this video on your screen right now. It's the best double movement settings, fastest way to get it. It'll make your gameplay so much better and your peace control so much spicier. I'm on Wooting 62%, no longer 100%, and I still can strafe. It's so much better than normal movement. To prove it, here is double movement. I'm running to the side, and then this is it off. <laughs> Look how awful this is. I can barely cut quarters. Bro, every single pro you guys know uses double movement. So please use double movement, watch my video, and as a result, turn lock input method as mouse on apply. I think this is like the boat sensitivity. <laughs> those are all the mouse and keyboard. It says mouse and keyboard, okay? That was those. <laughs> To finish up the video, I guess I'll quickly show the audio settings. These are gonna differ from person to person, so I don't know. Oh, I guess sound quality, I put on high. Low sounds kind of cool, but it cuts out and has a lot of bugs. 3D headphones is bad, do not use it. And yeah, that's audio settings in 20 seconds. What we really care about are the key binds. You guys might be confused why I do not have these binded. That is because I use the Wooting Double movement. You have to bind these go watch the video like i said let me quickly show all of them and then i'll explain the best keybinds to use you guys can look at them i don't have any secrets i've showed you all the important stuff and explained how they work um i think that's all i don't even know what these settings are there's baller settings in here in terms of optimal keybinds people are always gonna argue use whatever comfortable even though most of the time my version of optimal keybinds they are way more comfortable than bad keybinds but what my version of optimal keybinds are is having everything off of your wasd fingers which is your left index ring finger and your left middle finger which you should just never have any keybinds on. With really good optimal keybinds that are off your index and your ring finger, you're just never gonna lose control of your movement. You're gonna be able to run around, utilize that sweet double movement, never taking your fingers off. Noah Riley has 100% optimal keybinds, and that's why he's the best fighter. He literally got his optimal keybinds from me, and he just grinded them. His are also what I think are the best. What they are, your wall on your side mouse button, preferably the top one. Your floor is going to be on your thumb, so it could be anything on the bottom of your keyboard. Either C, maybe V, or maybe X, any of that stuff. Then stairs is going to be your other mouse keybind. It feels really good, floor and mouse there. Why did that sound weird? It feels really good. Then finally, roof is going to be left shift. The only reason I don't have it as left shift is because, as you can see, I have crouch on left shift. If I could, I would make crouch left control. I think that's what Noah does. So his keybinds look something like this. I can press all of these. Look, I'm pressing all of them right now. And I can move either direction. I have full control of my movement. Double movement with all of these. It's so beautiful. And I can crouch. Uh, there we go. This right here. Copy these if you want the most optimal keybinds. Those are the best keybinds you can get, baby. And you can set the rest of them for whatever you want. Like your weapon slots. You kind of want to make them close to WASD. So numbers work. Q works. Z. X, C, V, any of those work. You just want something that is near WASD, which is also kind of what I say if you're like me and you just cannot use maybe like left shift for your cone or you can't get used to a thumb keybind. Just find keybinds that are near WASD. You want to minimize the distance your index and your ring finger travel just so they can get back to WASD quicker. Do not use G, and I know a lot of people do for editing. It's just so much better to use E. E or F is way, way better than G. They're both so much closer to your movement keys, and F is literally right next to it. Like, why would you not use F over G? You'll get used to it so quick. Use, like I said, use mouse wheel up, which is to interact. Just make sure you have tap to search slash interact on. Use mouse wheel down or up for scroll wheel reset. Just put it on the second column. You see, I had mouse wheel down for building edit, then mouse wheel down also for reset building edit. That is this beautiful scroll wheel reset. I just look. 
I scroll down and it resets. It is so freaking nice and it is why people use keyboard and mouse over controller. Finally, ping slash place marker. I have my middle mouse button. I just click it in. Emote on backspace. I just, those are the best keybinds. I showed you them. Those are all the settings that I think I could possibly cover. Um, I don't know what else to say. Let's do the outro. Overall guys, those are the best in-game Fortnite settings for keyboard and mouse. So if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jerrion. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. Tournaments are actually starting up this week. So if any of you guys are competing, I'm going to wish you good luck. I'll be competing as well, and I will make some videos on the tournaments. Otherwise, that's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later. Thank <laughs> you.